Good day, friends. It is me, HL Montech, and I've got a sweet little project today that I'm showing off. I have got all of my scrap PLA stuffed in this cute little adorable uh, toaster oven that my mother found for me this summer. She found it for five bucks. I have made a tin foil rectangle, and I am melting this PLA down so that later I can make a sweet plastic puzzle on my Glowforge. So, my friends, let me show you how I set it up. So, this was obviously got from a second-hand store. We just simply moved it to 450, which you can see is 230 Celsius. Set it to bake, and then I set it to 20 minutes for how long it takes to melt. Now, if you can see down here, there is a little bit of orange as it heats up, and then we'll keep checking in to see how that PLA starts to turn into melted plastic. While we wait for that plastic to show up, let me show you how I get all my plastic. So when you use the MakerBot, it lays down this little itty bitty strip of plastic that you can always save and catch. I've got a little bin, which I can show you right here, where I store all these. And when I finally have enough plastic, plus also failed prints, like this piece right here was a failed print or a support, I can throw them in the bin and then later I can turn them into these sweet plastic puzzles using the Glowforge. I should have cleaned the window so that you could see better as it was happening, but there you can see that tin foil and you can see the uh, PLA starting to melt. It is about 10 minutes in, so I might add another 10 because I was not counting the preheat when I first set it, because I think it's going to take about 20 minutes to turn that into a sweet little rectangle of melted plastic. Alrighty friends, it is approximately 10 minutes later and notice how in the back it is really starting to get smooth as that PLA starts to melt to make our final project. It is silly of me of course to open this up but dug on it, it is a much better picture and what won't I sacrifice for all you viewers. Alrighty friends, so let's open this up after approximately 30 minutes, it's a little less we have got a pretty nice level chunk of PLA. I'm gonna let it go for just another five minutes to see if it totally flattens out. I'm guessing that little chunk back there that's white, I'm guessing that was actually ABS and I accidentally put it in the wrong pile. Alrighty friends, so here it is with the tin foil peeled off and I measured it and it is uh, 18 centimeters by 16 centimeters. So you can see here on my uh, cool little puzzle generator that I'll give you a link in the description. I put in the 18 by 16 and then you can adjust these numbers to whatever you want. It switches each time you change it and you can find the puzzle pieces that you think are cool and then you can also change the seed to make it look the way you want. Then when you're done, you'll be able to download your SVG and put it into play. I'm gonna change the name of mine to PLA Jigsaw because that's what I'm gonna use it for. And then let's bring it into the Glowforge and see how it all comes together. Hey there friends, I had a great idea and I took my heat gun and I put this on my workbench and I heated it and it is much more flat and you can see now I've got pins that are holding it flat. Let's bring in our artwork, which is that cool little puzzle piece that I stored in my little keychains and cardboard phone stand. Uh, do not ask why, but this is where I'm sticking it today apparently. Here comes the puzzle pieces and now I can arrange it to fit inside my little slab of PLA. So it doesn't quite fit, so I'm just going to take the design and I'm going to shrink it down to make sure it's more in the areas where it is going to be acceptable. Uh, this part where I had to flatten it out, uh, I'm going to just leave that off and I'm going to build out here. And let's check our settings. I am going to cook it with my uh, three passes, 200, and that stuff is five millimeters thick. And I'm going to do 100% power, uh, so I make sure that I cut through, but I'm going to monitor it. If it looks like I need to shut it off, I will do it by lifting the lid. So my friends, let's head up to the box and let's start this going. Of course, everybody's favorite spot. Let's hit the button. Let's watch it go. Alrighty friends, so there is the moment of truth. Let's see how well they cut out 
or if they need to run it one more time. Oh my gosh, we have got puzzle pieces. So some are cut a little better than others, and I'm trying to debate, do I score them, or just snap them off? I think I'm going to snap them off and show you what it looks like in just a minute. Alrighty friends, so once I pulled it off the Glowforge, uh, the outside edges cut wonderful, and the inside edges of the first row cut wonderful, but I should have done one more pass. So I tried to cut it one more time with a different setting, but it uh, wasn't lined up perfect. And I didn't want to mess up what I did because I thought this was pretty neat. I may instead choose to just remelt it and start the whole process again. But friends, it was pretty doggone successful. And I think if I'd have just done it a little bit slower, it would have been perfect. If you found the video useful, friends, please hit that like button. If you've got a question, comment, or suggestion, add it down below if you haven't subscribed yet. What are you waiting for? Mash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit the notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me. HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.